So last year, I finally got the Tesla solar panels. The entire system costed me around $15,000 for a 3.6 kilowatt hour system. Now I projected a return of around 8 to 14%. This rate is a lot higher than my mortgage interest rate and that's why I got it. Now I know solar has a lot of environmental benefits, but I want to make sure that I can get my money's worth. So in this video, I'm going to focus purely on its economics and share with you guys my cash flow model so you can calculate your own return based on your own inputs. I'll also help you guys create a sensitivity scenario so you can stress test just to make sure that if things go south, you can see if you'll make any money. Now I'll use my purchase as an example. I do live in San Diego and we do have net metering, one of the highest energy prices and also a lot of sun. If you're in San Diego, you could use this as a reference point, but if you're not in San Diego, your number might vary significantly. Before we jump into the model, most solar installer will have an estimated saving number for you, but I find them to be a little bit aggressive. So I hope you can use this model to input the values based on what you think is true. So let's get started by downloading the Excel spreadsheet below this video. So in this spreadsheet, in yellow, we have the inputs. In the bottom of it, in gray, we have what I would call the net cost. And in the bottom of that, we have the estimated return. Now, if you change the inputs, then your estimated return will also change. For example, if I change this 5555 to 5000, then your bottom number will change. Now, let me explain all of the inputs uh, starting with the solar production yearly estimate and the total cost of install this should come from your solar contract so as far as the production estimate uh, Tesla told me that they measured the pitch of the panel my location and also the direction of the panel to uh, come up with 5555 now I have no idea how they come up with this number but uh, what made me comfortable is they actually have a guarantee. So they guarantee 85% of their estimated production minus a half a percent per year panel degradation. Now the guarantee, they only give around seven cents per kilowatt hour. It doesn't really cover my cost of electricity, but it just makes me comfortable that there is some kind of a guarantee. Now my total cost of install is around fifteen thousand dollars and right now for input number three you can get a thirty percent federal tax credit and it is a credit it's not a deduction so that, that's a big amount that's around uh, four thousand dollars for for me and it's thirty percent up to 2019 uh, starting from 2020 it lowers to 26% and 22% in 2021. This, of course, uh, assuming that the rules uh, for the tax system will not change going forward. Next, we have the price reduction. I put my number at $700. So when I did this contract with Tesla, they say that because I did a direct purchase and I pay upfront, they gave me $500 back. Now, Tesla also allows you to pay with a credit card, uh, actually multiple credit cards if you want. So at least in today's value, you can probably get a 1.5% credit card and that can equal to around $200. So that's why I put this number at around $700 uh, for me. Next, we have the energy price per kilowatt hour. I put down as 25 cents per kilowatt hour and I am in San Diego. They're charging around 23 cents per kilowatt hour in winter times and 27 cents per kilowatt hour in summer times and these are tier one rates so if I use a lot more energy they do charge me more but for now I'm just gonna be a little bit conservative and just put down uh, the tier one number which is uh, on average 25 cents per kilowatt hour next we have the minimum monthly energy fees 
Now you're still con connected to the grid unless you have a multiple power wall. So right now my provider charges at least ten dollars per month. So that's what I'm I'm putting over here because I'm still reliant on the grid even though I make more power in the month than I use. I still am connected to the grid and I do have to adhere with the rules that my provider gives me which is paying a minimum fee. Next is the electricity price increase per year. I put down 2%. This is somewhat conservative because if you go to this other tab, San Diego electric rate, uh, you know, I'm calculating an average increase of around 7% per year. So, uh, you know, it sounds high. That's why just to be conservative, I'm going to put down two. Next, we have the solar panel yearly degradation. Now, looking at the uh, Tesla solar contract, looking online and looking at my coworker who, who has installed solar in the last several years um, and evaluating their data, it seems like half a percent is a good number for the solar panel yearly degradation. So every year, your solar become just a little bit less effective. So overall, in gray here, uh, my net cost is just under $10,000. That's our, that's the $15,000 minus the federal tax credit minus the price reduction. So in the bottom, we get to this estimated return. Now I'm using this IRR formula. Uh, just to keep it simple, it is uh, my return assuming uh, reinvestments. So my monthly return is around 1.1%. My yearly return is around 13.6%. Now this is using 20 year of cash flow and most solar installer will give you 20 year warranty. Now of course if you use my referral link below and go with that Tesla, they'll give you an additional 5 years that brings it to 25 year warranty for your system. Now if you look online, solar panels do last a long time, so they might last you 30 years. And uh, if it is 30 years, then you know my return is around 14.7%. That leaves me with a break even of around 90 months or seven and a half year. And all these numbers are my base case scenario. Uh, if you guys are curious about the calculation, in the bottom I have this cash flow model. You can follow uh, how I calculate each month, how much am I producing, uh, minus the degradation, uh, my total production, minus the minimum fees, and my cash flow. Assuming that my month zero, my initial investment over here, it's using my net cost. Because, you know, the federal tax credit and the price reduction, I'll get that, uh, you know, either the following tax year or, uh, several months after my install. Now that we have the base case, let's make a more conservative scenario. Just in case if our inputs didn't go as planned, will we still make any money? All right, so starting with the solar production estimate, 5,555. So Tesla guarantees 85% of their production. So I'm just gonna take the 85% number. So we have five, 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 five times 85%, you get 4721. Let's say that the price of the install increases. Uh, let me make this zero just to be conservative. And also let's increase the monthly minimum energy fees to $15 per month. And also increase the degradation from half a percent to 1% per year. Now, by changing all these inputs, my estimated return went down to around 8.2% per year. So th that seems to be a pretty good return. So 8.2% in the low end and around 14.6% in the high end. So it seems like a pretty good investment uh, for my scenario. So I hope this video helps you decide on a solar purchase. If you're still on the fence, you still have until the end of 2019 to claim that maximum 30% tax credit. And if you want to hear more videos about solar, hit the subscribe button. I'll make uh, more videos about solar, about my install, how it went, 
if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them below. And if you're gonna use Tesla, use my referral link so you can get an extra five years warranty and I also get the referral credit. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.